Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little video on how I made this tiger commission. So if you haven't seen the video where I sculpted the head for this, I'll try and remember to link it down below, I never do, but it is on my YouTube channel. And uh, just a little overview, I use Sculpey Original, which is the white one, for most of my sculpts. And any of the beige colored Sculpey is Super Sculpey, so it works really well for things like gums and noses. Uh, but majority is sculpted out of Sculpey Original, which I have some of that stock of both in my shop at the moment, so check that out. Um, and yeah, check out the video if you want to know how I sculpted the rest of the head for this. So once I've done the head, I make sure it's nice and baked. I wanted this tiger to be a little bit different from the one that I made before, so I made the mouth a little bit more open um, and gave it a little bit more of uh, different characteristics on the face so it looks different from the other two that I made. Uh, for the feet I am sculpting the feet out of Sculpey Original as well. Uh, feet uh, don't take as long as the head uh, but it's always difficult to get all four feet the same uh, sculpt, sculpture looking the same I guess. Uh, I don't always do uh, polymer clay feet. Sometimes I do resin feet. Um, they're a lot more durable than the polymer clay feet and sometimes I also do cloth clay feet as well if I want things to be movable or if things are thin um, I tend to go for the cloth clay uh, as well because it's just uh, a bit bendable and won't break. Um, so yeah the feet are usually the quickest part uh, to sculpt. For the tiger head, I am not sculpting the ears on this one, so the, these will have, all my tigers have had um, posable ears. The posable ears work well with like a larger doll, um, but I haven't really done too many posable ears on smaller dolls before. Um, mainly just the larger dolls, but um, I think they work really well for big cats. So when I do like other big, big cats, like um, a cheetah, I have a plan to do a cheetah soon. Um, definitely be doing some more um, movable ears and maybe some movable jaws just depends just depends how I feel um, the sculpt to be looking and if it needs a movable jaw or not it's, it's a lot more work with a movable jaw so um, yes <laughs> Alright, so once we have baked all the pieces, I can then start painting all of the areas that are going to be exposed or don't want to have faux fur on it. So for this one, 
It's mainly the uh, the mouth, the nose area, and the eyes. The nose area for this one, because the tiger's nose are like a transparent beige color, I won't need to be painting too much, just a little bit of black around like the nostril area. Um, but mostly I'm going to leave that beige color um, to show through. It just creates a little bit more realism um, on the dolls as opposed to painting that color because uh, there's that tiny bit of transparency uh, on the, the Super Sculpey. So I'm using a water-based acrylic paint, nothing too special. The brand is Chromacryl. Uh, I think it's an Australian brand, um, but you can find anything in your local craft store that is water-based acrylic. It's not expensive, but I just really like the way um, this is this paint is made and like the consistency of it. It's really pigmented, and uh, I've never really had a problem with any of these paints, and they're super cheap. Uh, so that's basically what I use. I also use uh, Liquitex paints and Derivigan Matisse paints as well, but they they start getting on the more expensive side. Um, but just, yeah, go have a look at your local craft store and find a paint that you might like um, if you can't find the chroma krill. So normally I like to prime the pieces or the areas that I'm going to be painting with a, uh, it's like a canvas primer by Derivigan Matisse. It just like gives it a little bit of a tooth for the paint to stick to. Uh, mainly I do that if I'm going to paint um, like larger sections or if I'm going to paint on top of resin because resin can be quite uh, slippery I guess and the paint can rub off really easily so it's always um, good to prime your pieces before painting them. Uh, so yeah I use, I use just a canvas primer um, which works really really well and has that really nice tooth. Same deal with the feet. So I did like a little uh, undercoat of like a like a red, ready browny color, and then covered that again with some black paint just to get like a really gentle, subtle see through of that uh, or the red color. Uh, so moving on to the ears. So the ears are made with a wire armature. Um, I've experimented doing a small ball and socket armature, but it just kind of gets too big. So I opt for the wire armature for this one and I basically just cut out the colors of the ears. So the back is going to be black and obviously the inside of the ear is going to be white. So I've made really rough uh, armature shapes out of wire. It's really thin wire. Um, I'm not sure how big it is. It might be a 0.5 or something. And you can find like wire like this from jewelry shops or like jewelry supplies. Um, it works really well. And I basically am gluing two pieces of the fabric together uh, and that will um, basically start forming the ear. So I'm using a tacky craft glue that I use for adhering my faux fur to um, the, either clay or resin. Works really well for adhering fabric. Um, so yeah, I like to use tacky fabric as opposed to like a runnier one uh, just because it dries quickly and it tacks easily so uh, once that's nice and dry I can start um, giving it a trim and start sort of shaping the ear so I always have like a larger piece of um, fabric over the armature so I can trim it to size and start refining the actual ear so uh, I basically give it a good trim um, not too much of a trim and then start working on that side seam. So I want to get rid of that seam and um, sort of mash the, the the pile together to create a thinner edge. Um, and yeah, it works really well when you leave the, the hair a little bit longer. Uh, so moving on to the armature. So I'm using a one quarter sized armature. That's my middle one for the entire armature. Um, I still have plenty of this in stock in my store, so check that out. And I'm just covering it in um, some pipe cleaners, and the pipe cleaners just basically enable the polyfill to um, to stick to something. Because wrapping it around just plain plastic is kind of slides around a little bit. So um, yeah, having the just the the pipe cleaners there means it doesn't slip around and I can work properly. So. Uh, a lot of my dolls lately have been um, needle felted the body uh, and I just kind of preferring to do it this way because 
I feel like I can refine the body a little bit more and uh, make it a little bit more realistic with muscle tone and everything. So I'll probably stick to doing it this way um, in the future. And then once I have fully needle felted a body underneath, um, I can start uh, applying a faux fur skin over the top of it. So it's just basically um, having a piece of faux fur that covers all the way around and just refining um, little areas to and, and trimming off excess bits and then sewing it all together. So it's a lot more work than uh, the old technique that I was doing, which I was um, sewing on a sewing machine, uh, more like uh, the way plush plushes are made. But I feel like this way is I just get a lot more realism, um, even though it takes longer. But um, and I hate hand sewing, but I, yeah, I just think the the quality is worth it when you get something looking um, a little bit more realistic when you're making it. So the stitch that I use is a ladder stitch to close all of my pieces up. And I also use a good quality thread um, called Gudeman and I also use upholstery thread as well uh, just because it's a little bit stronger and you can pull the seam a bit tighter without the thread snapping so it's always good to uh, just invest in some good quality thread when you're sewing your pieces. Uh, normally I start with the torso part of the body and then I start working on like the neck area and also the legs and the tail luckily last. Uh, once that's done, I can start adhering all the pieces to the polymer clay. Uh, so you'd normally I start with the head, um, the neck area and adhere that bit. Uh, and then I can start adhering all the rest of it. Uh, I give it a good old trim, just a real quick one at the start until I apply the faux fur to the face. And then I give the whole body a, a trim with what it's gonna look like. Uh, once that fur is on the face just so um, you can tell how, how the fur is going to be sitting a little bit better than if you trim the body first. Um, you can sort of blend that pile in a little bit better. So once that's done I can start um, just refining all of those areas like the eyes and any markings that need to be done. Um, in this case this tiger is an orange tiger with stripes so I sort of start mapping out where I want the stripes to go and then I'll be applying that uh, the color and also the stripes with an airbrush so um, my I have a video on my channel about the airbrush um, it is an eye water and it can get uh, a thin stream so it's really really good for stripes and little details like that so highly recommend getting an airbrush if you are into um, airbrushing your dolls. Uh, I also use fabric markers and fabric paints so I also have a brand new stock of just a couple of uh, handful of paints, fabric paints that I use and fabric markers as well in my store. It's only really limited so um, the link is in my description if you're interested in something like that but it's basically the entire process of how I made this uh, little tiger commission. Uh, the paints that I used for the airbrushing, I actually used a chrome acryl acrylic paint um, and it is a gold oxide is the colour that I use. It's, um, it's orange but it's kind of got a tanny colour to it uh, and I think it works really well for tigers in general. And then the black stripes, I used the black paint by the brand Jacquard and that's the one that's in my store and then once that's done I give it a good little brush out um, to get rid of any clumps while it's still semi wet uh, otherwise it gets a little bit too hard to brush out once it is dry. So that's pretty much the whole process. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff on my videos. It's helped my channel grow. You can also find me on Patreon um, and also uh, my shop at creaturesofnet.com and you find me on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok at creaturesofnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!